Hey, Neek, you remember the uh, Atlanta Hawks about mm, 15 years ago, them young boys with like Joe Johnson, Mike Bibby, Al Horford when they were starting to come up? Yeah. Do you know what Josh like, Smith, Josh Smith said, where do you guys see your ceiling? He said, our ceiling is through the roof. <laughs> What's up, y'all? <laughs> it is March 26, 2024. We are the Hoop Storians. I'm Tony Styles. That is unique over there. Um, let's get into this date in NBA history. Um, the Los Angeles Lakers beat Seattle 124 to 98 to finish the season at 69 and 13. At the time, that was the best record of all time. We know then the Bulls beat it in 96 with 72 wins. Then we saw the Warriors beat it at 70 with 73 wins. Um, one, every sport that we have, baseball, football, basketball, everybody with the record for most wins in a season has not won a title. So one, do you think having the best record of all time is cursed? Two, do you think anybody will top 73 and nine? Repeat the question. I don't think anybody's going to top 73 and 9, but what was the first part of that question? In football, baseball, and basketball, everybody that has the best record in the regular season, such as the Warriors at 73 and 9, did not win the title that season. Same goes for baseball, same goes for football. Do you think having the best record puts a team at a disadvantage to win it? The Bulls don't have the best record anymore, though. They did, though. They, but they, they did. They won- Right. And then somebody did have the best record in football and won the title, too. But now when the Patriots went 16 and 0, now they don't. And then but, before the Marlins right. set the record, someone did. But right. I'm saying nowadays, yeah. in the, go ahead. But I'm saying in the 21st century, do you think you. Okay. It, it is a hindrance? Because that's when all these records have been set. Do you think it's a hindrance to have the top record in the league because none of them won a title when they set the record? It, it's seeming like it may be too much energy is wasted on setting on records. Um, mm-hmm. Like, for instance, we saw what happened with Golden State. By the time they made it to the finals, they were gassed just based on how difficult it was getting past OKC. Um, they went the whole season without losing three in a row just to turn around. Wait, yeah, they went the whole season without losing three in a row just to turn around and do exactly that in the finals. So I think it was... Yeah, a lot of energy that was spent on gaining on records or obtaining on records in the regular season wins. But um, and also you got to look at it like this, too. When you're winning like that and it's the victories are coming so easy, it's mm-hmm. also very easy for you to not focus on certain things that you need. Like, for instance, um, if we're going in, let's say. I have a team and I got a bunch of shooters and we go in and we're hot in the first quarter. We're so hot in the first quarter that we're blowing teams out. And we're constantly doing this where we're shooting so well to where we're blowing teams out. We're not learning a lot of the other things that we need. We're not learning how to match up. We're not learning what to do when we're off. So I think it could have been a combination of things like that. When you have a winning season like that, you don't go through the trials that you need to get through these playoffs and get through uh, these finals. That's just my opinion. Well, and that's whose opinion we needed right now. So that was this day in NBA history. So um, I wanted to get into, we were talking about last week, redoing the 96 draft. I want to do a bunch of redrafts actually, you know, cause we have the draft coming up in three months. We do one once a week, you know, we work our way through some, um, That's what I was thinking of. Um, I was also thinking, too, after we do this, you know, we obviously do it just based on position. Uh, Mm -hmm. We can put the teams in a simulator and we can play your team against mine and see who wins just for shits and giggles. And obviously it means nothing, but it does. Um, (laughs) So hold on. So first, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to start this off with uh, I am going to give you let me find this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and give you the option of having the first selection, but you have to guess. I'm writing down a number. All you have to do is guess if it's odd or even. If you guess right, you get the first pick. It's an odd number. Oh, it's an even number. Okay. 
That's why I'm drafting first. Uh, now, do you think we should do snake draft, or do you think we should just go back and forth? I'm thinking snake draft because that way uh, whoever gets the first pick will always have the advantage. Um, I really so what I'm saying all. is, okay, so we'll do snake draft, okay? So I'll get the first pick. You'll get the next two picks. I'll get the next two picks, and we'll keep it going from there. Okay. So – We'll go ahead and do that. I think that's fair. Unless you want to do just, you know, one-on-one, then you're always playing catch-up against me. All right, so my first guy, my first guy I'm going to go ahead and do, and this is right after the uh, the uh, episode we had last night. I'm going to go ahead and pick Kobe. Just so you know, there's, 11, there's 11 all-stars, 11 guys in this in this draft class made an all-star team. So, yeah. I'm, so I can assure you they're probably going first. So there we go. So okay. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go with Kobe. Um, you know, what I think I got, know it, Jars, what up, bro? I got it. I got an MVP in Kobe. I got a scoring champ. I got a guy who made some all defensive teams. I think I'm pretty solid with Kobe as my number one pick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm hating. I'm hating. However, I can't knock you on that. So you go on Kobe. Um, and it's on me for my number one. I'm it's going with I'm going with Steve Nash. Just like with Kobe, you have an MVP. Um, mm -hmm. you also have an all-star. You have somebody that can give you 50% from the field. Not always, but I'm saying he can give you a season of 50 from the field with 40 from the three, 90, and you feel me? One of those 50, 40, 90 players in Steve Nash. So yeah, I'm going with Nash as my number one pick. Well, then who's your second? Who's your second pick? All right, good. I'm glad we're going there because my second pick is somebody that's as lethal as Kobe when it comes to the scoring. I'm going with my man Allen Iverson. AI. Um, with AI, you have multi-time All Star, um, a league MVP, even an All Star MVP, multiple scoring champs. Um, Iverson. It's even the type of player that can get you some steals, even though he's seen as a defensive liability based on size and, you know, matchups and everything like that. But he's quick and he plays that 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 passing lane. So I'm going with Steve Nash is my one. Iverson is my two. Hey, let me ask you this. OK, so these top three guys right here, they all won an MVP. Do you think these three guys are head and shoulders above the rest of the class or no? My personal opinion, yes. I Like. And this is no, this is no offense to any, this is no shade. I mean, we got a, a champion on here. We got a couple champions on here besides Kobe. So I'm not taking away from either one of them, but at the same time, yeah. Like when you look at the careers and just the, the personal accolades and not that that's so important, but realistically speaking, when you look at the accolades, what other players are getting as many accolades as them, like, you know, in a, in a, um, in a Ben Wallace, you might get somebody that's going to give you the the blocks or give you the rebounds and everything like that, but he's not going to give you much scoring. And then he's not going to be the best blocker or rebounder in history mm -hmm. either. Uh, and Nash, you're seeing one of the greatest point guards of all time. You're seeing one of the greatest assist men, Kobe, you're seeing one of the greatest scores, Iverson, you're again, another elite score. So I feel as though, there's areas of eliteness with those three that sets them apart from the rest of the list, in my opinion. How no, I like, I like it. Yeah, I, I, I can't fault that. I think because they won MVPs, they're put up at a higher level. Um, I think over the course of a career, I mean, like I said, I think Iverson's peak was higher, but I think I would rather have Ray Allen's 18 mm -hmm. years. 18 years. You good? Yeah. I don't know why that was coming through. Right. But um, so, yeah, I would look at it like um, I would look at it like, uh, yeah, I probably would take Ray Allen's career over. But I think peak Iverson, peak Nash, peak. Yeah. Like I, I would just go with those guys. I think those would be the uh, the ones to go with. And that's um, valid. too. Like we're saying, the peak, the peak of those three is it's not even no comparison. No, definitely. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. Um, but. I mean, I think there are some other guys that had some good peaks, but um, let me ask you this. Do you think Ray Allen had a better career than Allen Iverson overall? Do you think his 18 years are better than Iverson's 14 or no? Yeah, um, I'm going to tell you why. Um, 
he doesn't have scoring titles like Iverson or anything like that. But while Ray Allen was in the league, he was still considered while he was in the league and respected as one of the better players in the league. He was one of the premier guards. He was one of the all stars of the league. Um, he actually got a title whereas Iverson could not, whether it's due to him contributing to a team or being the number one option, we can't deny that his contributions when he won, yeah, Ray's not a bench, you know, Ray Allen wasn't no bench player. You feel me? Ray Allen is out there helping on defense. He's out there scoring points. He's out there breaking three-point records and stuff like that. So considering that, yeah, I'd probably take over the – but then again, he did play what four extra years in Iverson too, right? Mm, considering that, I didn't talk myself out of it. No, I'm going with Iverson. I'm sticking with Iverson still because um, even though Ray did get that title, which I give him credit for, um, he got a couple titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the all-time leader in threes made. And he was the all-time leaders in threes in a season. So, I mean, he did have some records. Uh, obviously, they've been surpassed or supplanted since then. But um, all I'm saying is it is a definite argument that Ray Allen has a better career than Allen Iverson. Personally, I'd rather have Ray Allen's. Yeah, Personally, there's, there's I'd rather have the couple argument. years and I'd rather have the rings. See, and there's that. You feel me? So, yeah, there's definitely an argument that can be made. I guess for me, it depends on – which accolade I personally cared about most at that point in time. Cause you feel me? Like I could see, like, if let's say for instance, I'm playing for a team and I don't see us winning a title, then a personal accolades are going to be important to me. Like if I'm playing for an organization and, and I don't plan on leaving them and I don't see any way possible, we're going to win. Yeah. I'm probably going for the three point championship. I'm pro- I mean, three point championship. I'm probably going for the record for threes or something like that. Um, I don't know if Iverson really felt as though they had a good chance to win. So maybe that's why we're seeing ball hogging and stuff like that, if you want to call it that. But um, mm-hmm. I can't knock a person for choosing Ray Allen's career over Iverson's career because, as you stated, he did get the chips. You feel me? Most people that play ball, you feel me, when you're playing it for the right reason, that's what you want to play for. So I can't even knock that at all. Um, like I said, I guess for me it will depend on what type of team I was on. Um I want the chips, though. So, yeah, Ray Allen. And, and that's what I'm saying. Plus, he had the four extra years. He had a couple different phases. It's kind of like once Iverson um, wasn't the star player anymore, his career was just over. You know, because I think Iverson had a whole another year where he was the fifth starter, the bench player. You know, he could probably play another four or five years and had a whole different career. I would have loved to see him on that first-year Heat team with LeBron and Wade and all that. I would have loved to see him uh, running the point for them. I just don't feel like at the end of his career, the way Allen Iverson's career ended, he was still a starter caliber player. So I can get why you wouldn't want to come off the bench. Like, I, 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 in one sense, I can't knock Iverson for not wanting to go the Jamal Crawford route. But at the same time, he probably could have won a championship had he done that. Had he been willing yeah. to do that? Yeah, like I said, you think of him on like, you know, those those heat teams where he's coming off the bench, providing like a little spark, you know what I mean? Giving him like 12 a game in 20 minutes or something like that. Yeah, why not? Um, not only that, he would have had the respect of um of Wade and um LeBron and Bosch and all them. So yeah. He already had that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um let's go with the fourth and fifth pick of the draft. Um for my fourth pick, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, Jermaine O'Neal. Knew it. Well, hey, I mean, when the dude, got when the issue, right? Well, when the dude's at his peak, you know what I mean? He's 25 and 12, basically. 25 and 10, 24, 9, whatever. So I like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go with Peja as well as my fifth pick. Yeah. Because yeah. when Peja was on, Peja was on. Peja used to get so hot, so quick. It was ridiculous. You know what's funny? People forget about Peja. You feel me? Peja was, percentage-wise, he probably isn't, um, percentage-wise, probably not as great on paper as a clay. But when you watch Peja, and this is off the top of my head, I don't, I don't remember his percentages ever being in a four, maybe. But um, I do know this. Peja used to get hot, and he used to get hot often. 
Right. And yeah, he's he's one of the he's one of the deadly, he's one of those deadly streaky. I can't even call him streaky, but yeah, he was definitely one of them deadly long range shooters um in the league. Well, I think Larry Bird once said it best. He said that dude doesn't miss left to right. His shot is always straight. So <laughs> this oh, is yeah, actually, hey, yeah, yeah. Actually, let me ask you that. Would you rather miss left to right or or front and short? Or uh, long and short? What would you rather miss? What do you think is better? What do you think shows you're a better shooter? Miss left and right or longer, long, um, long and short. I think long and short because that's more of a perception thing. You feel me? Um, mm-hmm. You could, uh, or for when you're missing because you're short, that means it's on. It's on point. You just maybe didn't put enough. <laughs> you didn't flick your wrist enough. You didn't put enough fingertips into it. So you didn't put enough, huh? On it. We didn't put a little, huh? You, didn't put enough, huh? you got enough for that. You gotta get that you James Brown on him. Yeah, you know, you ain't you ain't put enough of that soul on it. Um, so yeah, I feel as though when you're missing short, just look at it. When you when you're watching a ball go, and they're short, tell me it doesn't look like it's going in before it falls short. It does. When you missing left to right, it's kind of like okay, that was off target, off target. It's it's not like okay, you just fell short. No, you were off target. You you threw it slightly too far left, slightly too far right. So yeah, that's that's a great skill to only be short and not too far right or too far left. No, I feel you. Like I said, I mean, I would love to be centered on every time. I just don't want to miss. Period. That's why they used to call me machine guns because I was automatic. <laughs> so who you got for who you got for the uh, who you got for the sixth and seventh pick? All right. Um. For six and seven, I'm going with for my six. I'm going with Ray Allen. Okay. Now, we were already talking about Ray. Ray, we already know what Ray brings to the table. Um, as you see, it was difficult for me to even choose between Ray Allen and Allen Iverson as far as um whose career I would prefer. So it probably right. shouldn't come as a shock that I went with Ray Allen. But you're going to hate my number seven, though. <laughs> Why am I going to hate your number seven? Uh, For my number seven, I'm going with Marbury. I'm going with Stephon Marbury. I'm going with mm-hmm. someone who is a dog Um, mm-hmm. as far as point guards go. He's, he's an offensive dog. He's one of those. He was pretty much able to bully other guards, even though he wasn't that tall. He was he was that strong. Um. Him and KG and don't plan together. They maybe they would have gone a little further had they had more time to gel together. Maybe if they had more years together, um, KG's first title comes with comes alongside Steph playing for Minnesota versus Boston. Who knows? No, I think I think what a lot of people don't understand, especially people that weren't around for the nineties. Um, and you're definitely more of a eye test guy than I am. I'm more of the numbers guy. Um, Marbury to me, watching the eye test, Marbury's every mouth the talent out. He's Allen Iverson, just bigger, just bigger. He's like two, three inches taller. He's 30 pounds heavier or something like that. 20, 30 pounds heavier. To me, he was just Iverson. He had, he, he could hit a shot. He's the only person I've ever seen just hit a half court shot. It looks like a regular jump shot. So, um, yeah, I saw a game with Shaq and Kobe where he got, what, 50 and 12 assists or something, and Shaq was like, he's the best player. Marbury regular, in 01, you know, he um, he brought back the All-Stars from the from the, um, from the behind him and Iverson, and more so him in the clutch at the end, and won the game. So Marbury, yeah, Marbury's awesome. I don't know. I don't know why it didn't happen with uh, – I, I don't know why he, he – I, I don't know why he didn't uh, make it better than what he did. I don't know why he's not more than a two-time All-Star. I don't know why he's not more than a two-time All-NBA player. That dude should have had 20,000 points and 10,000 assists. I don't really get it. But what were you going to say about him? Oh, no, no. I was um, going to touch on that All-Star game. Like, yeah, it was like um, – even from what Marbury was saying, it was that that fire. Once Iverson put that fire in them and he started bringing them back, Marbury was like, okay, I'm riding with you. Marbury was like, hey, we ain't going like no chumps. I'm, and that's what he brings. Marbury is – he's that tough – he has that tough mentality. And obviously you can't just win with mentality. But when you have the skill set and you have the tough mentality to go with it mm-hmm. and that lead 
that typically you 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 typically see players go far or you typically see that as a good formula for success. Um, no, I, I, I agree with that. So, yeah, like, because, you know, that's like the mentality of the Detroit bad boys. You feel me? You got some skill, but then you have the attitude. You have the toughness. And you feel me? It's, and it's going to take that grit. So, yeah, Steph, uh, Marbury, that is. Yeah, he, I think he would have done well had he stayed with KG. But um, even when he was with Phoenix, even when he was with Phoenix, he was doing great. So, well, they had that one good season. They had the 2 season. They didn't make it. And then they had the 3 season. And then the 4 season. And the 3 season, they took the Spurs to six. And everybody took the Spurs to six. They actually beat them in game one, lost games two, three, won game four, lost game five, lost game six. Um, yeah. So, I, I don't know. They, they were on this trajectory up. And then it's like Marbury went in Marbury mode and killed it. Then he went to the Knicks. Then they got <laughs> swept by the Nets in 04. And then he never made the playoffs again. And there we go. And we got questions. This is y'all's 90s fits with the hat. I don't know if this is our 90s fits, but, you know, it's my it's my fit for the evening, I guess. You know, it's funny. No, nah, bro, What's this up? is what I want to <laughs> This is what I want to work. <laughs> this is just how I looked all day. <laughs> Yeah, this ain't got nothing to do with uh the podcast. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody. This is this is just me. Um, however, I will say this though, seeing as how I got on all this Mickey Mouse, it is quite nineties. Like you know, I got on a windbreaker. Um, I got on a snapback. So yeah, accidentally I'm nineties out, but no, nah, it wasn't intentional. Well, I mean, if you're rocking a bunch of Mickey, ain't Mickey 100 years old? So aren't you like some 1920 shit? Mickey, Mickey's from 1928. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is this snapback, this is yeah. probably like, some, this is you know, snapbacks wasn't, that was some 90s stuff. You feel me? It was, they were out in the 80s and everything, but they were typically prevalent in the 90s. You feel me? Windbreakers, this is, this is something that you typically saw off the 90s, especially with all of these colors that I got. So I get it. I feel you. So, what was that? That was the sixth and seventh pick, right? Yeah, sixth and seventh. Okay, so for my for with the seventh pick, or no, I'm sorry, the eighth pick, I'm gonna go ahead and go Sharif. I knew it. I can't even for it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go with Marcus Camby at the ninth pick. As you should. So. So for those that don't know, Camby was a uh, – he had a really weird shot. <laughs> His jump shot was weird. But it went in um, great length, good rebounder, good D. Sharif was kind of an all-around. He was kind of a tweener forward. He wasn't really a small forward. wasn't really a power forward. He had like um, he had like a 20 and 10 season, made like an, one all-star game, I want to say. Uh, mostly toiled away in Memphis, didn't do much. Then he went to Atlanta, and they thought Atlanta was going to make the playoffs with like him and Jason Terry. And then uh, they didn't do much after that and as well. And then he got traded to Portland, and that was kind of it. And now he is the president of the G League. Yeah, um, I mean, he had a short-lived um, career in the league, but at the same time, you did see um, why he ended up an all-star that season. Like, he was the he was the type of player that would get you like 20 and 7. Um, like you said, you know, he, he can even in a season get you 20 and 10, but, um, you know, that's pretty much the type of peak he would have had like a 20 and seven, but, um, no, I like, why don't you think Sharif stayed around longer or do you just think he flamed out quicker? He just wasn't, just couldn't stay good as long. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I don't remember, um, what caused him to leave. I thought it had something to do with injury. It wasn't injury related at all. Like he didn't have anything that, that slowed him down. Not really. He just kind of, he just kind of like tapered off from what I remember. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. He didn't. And then he, um, and he was never really the same after that when he went to Portland and he played, or was that Theo Ratliff? Either him or Theo Ratliff got traded to Portland one year and played like 85 games. So I, I don't I don't remember exactly which one it was, but um, yeah, Sharif was twenty and ten in like two thousand, and then he was ninety nine in the lockout season. He was twenty three and eight. So um, good, yeah, I'm, li yeah, I'm liking I'm, 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 I'm liking the way my team's shaping up right now. I mean, I personally think we're just going to murder you in this simulation game, but uh, <laughs> but we'll have to see how it's we'll have to see how you know lines up. But yeah, I just think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill you on this. I worry about nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, it's on. Yeah, I ain't got it. no worries. All right, so it's on me. It's on you. It's on you, baby. 
I am going with I'm going with my first big fella, although he ain't that big, he big enough. I'm going with Antoine Walker. I'm going with the big guy that um he actually puts me in a mind of um not necessarily a Marcus Mark. Who am I thinking? Um I am thinking another Boston player though. But he's um, made for this era. Loved threes, could dribble. Big six, baby. Nine, That's what I'm okay. thinking. I'm thinking big baby. That's who he puts me in the mind of. But yeah, he is made for this era. And for those reasons that you're saying, Antoine Walker, he had handles for a big dude. He had handles. Um, he had a jump shot. You feel me? Um, it's like the size of a power, but at the same time, like he's moving around like a small, he's moving around like a shooting guard. So, um, yeah, I, I needed some size. And like I said, like, and he's an all-star as well in his own right. So yeah, I'm going with, Antoine hey, Walker. Hey, you hmm? know why he shot? You know why he shot so many threes, right? They asked him that once. What would he say? Because there are no fours. See, that's a that's a killer. See, that's the heart right there. He said, "I'm I'm trying to put these buckets up by any means necessary." No way, him on that. Hey, what I like about Antoine too, people like Amari Stoudemire can't even say this. He is a twenty and ten guy. So he did one year average 20 and 10. So, all right, who are you going after Antoine? <laughs> employee number eight. My employee number eight, you for the laugh. It is the remaining all-star on the list. Oh, wait, no, it's not. There's still somebody missing. I'm going with Ben Wallace. I just realized you didn't pick Ben Wallace. No, actually, he was going to be my next pick. So uh, I, I had a choice to go between him and Camby, and Camby just gave me a little more offensively. Oh, you didn't slip up. My, but you're right, though. He he is going to give you more offensively. And you know what's funny? I mean, I guess I could tell you now because uh, I was laughing at this in my head. <laughs> Who I was going to pick is um, Adridas. Uh, I can't even say his name. Oh, Zadrunas Elgaskis. <laughs> I was going to pick Elgaskis. He's at least going to stay in the league for, you know, he'll give me 13 years. Um, He'll give you an all-star season, but um, yeah, I, I just realized you didn't pick Ben, and if I had to choose between Elgaskis and Wallace, it's kind of an obvious choice, so yeah. No, I'm going I'm with the man who can wear headbands on his arms. That's who I'm going with. You know, you know what's funny, and a lot of people don't really realize this, but Ben Wallace, and maybe it's just the way their careers lined up, um, he owned Shaq in the playoffs. That dude owned Shaq in the playoffs. Hmm? I don't think Shaq – was Shaq coming into the league being such a, I guess, a physical – like being that type of specimen when he first came into the league, we weren't used to people that were like Shaq, just all that muscle and everything like that. But he still looks thin. Like he didn't look thin in the 90s, like not in the early 90s, not rookie C. Like he didn't look thin in 92. But when you right. look at videos from 92 today, he looks thin. Ben Wallace, oh, on the other hand, huh? Well, I was going to say, too, another one of my favorite ones is KG still looks thin. But then if you go back to 1995, somehow he looks even he thinner. Way worse. <laughs> <laughs> somehow he looks even way thinner. Right, right, right. So uh, with Ben Wallace, he, on the other hand, just was crazy swole. He was just, you know. All pauses, but yeah, he was just one of those dudes that you know that lean muscle, that that toughness. He just everything about him just screamed like defense. Like he looked like he's in the game solely for purposes of guarding you. No, 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 I, was, I agree. I mean, about well, six, he's about he's about six eight. So they said he was. Six, they nine. listed him at six nine, but I rumor has it that he's six six. I don't know how tall he is. See exactly. See, he won't answer my calls. <laughs> now he won't answer my calls. That, that he he's won't answer so, my calls, it's insane. Yeah, that's crazy too. But the fact that he's so big and so muscular that he looks inches taller. Usually when you see people adding size, it sometimes makes them look shorter. No, for some mm -hmm. reason it just made him look gigantic. Like you couldn't tell me he wasn't the White Howard size, even though he was nowhere near the White Howard size. Nowhere near it. But it was what it was, and it is what it is. No, what, what Ben was, Ben was looking swole, though. Ben was Ben was jacked up. Ben, ben Wallace, to me, looked like a little bit smaller version of Alonzo Mourning. Yeah. yeah. Like body-wise, body-wise. 
Because Alonzo yeah. was a short center, but Alonzo had size. Yeah, like when you up against Ben Wallace, because and the reason why I'm talking about how he looked is because you have to take into consideration, like, how do you move something like that? How do you move a Carl Malone? You feel me? How do you move a Ben Wallace? Uh, who else? Even even an Andre Iguodala. So it's like when you're seeing people that are this cut, uh, um, David Robinson, when you're seeing them that cut, it, it's very difficult to move them. So back to your point, Shaq wasn't used to coming across players like that, especially not at that point. This is big. This is this is diesel Shaq. He was used to just having his way with everybody. As he said, barbecue chicken all around. Mm, he wasn't able to fry Ben Wallace up like that. You know, it's a cool a cool fact about David Robinson because you talked about, you know, did David Robinson look like a pretty swole dude to you? Yeah. So and it, was pan- more, it was more cut. It was more cut. And I, I know I know he had that crazy slim waistline. But, yeah, he, he looked huge to me. <laughs> well, actually, that's what I was going to say. Um, his slim waistline. He only wore a size 32 pants in the waist. And he's seven feet tall. That's nuts. Seven one. <laughs> That's so what do you think that dude, that dude wore what like what a 42 by 32 or something? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. No, it is. Yeah. It is everything Taylor made. Got it. Yeah, no, he because I mean he was just, I mean, that dude was just a V and all that. Um looking looking back on it, it was um what was I gonna say? David Robinson has the best looking center's body. No diddy. <laughs> no diddy. <laughs> no diddy. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he looks like there's there's players that look like him. Like I think Giannis, but I guess Giannis is more of a power. But um, Giannis is shaping out to look very much like David Robinson did. You think so? And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could see it in that. Yeah, but the point I was making though, and as you see, you can't move Giannis. You come, you can't stop Giannis. So yeah, so back to the point. Yeah, some of these players, they're just they're freaks of nature. And Shaq being a freak of nature, this was one of the only times he had to encounter another one himself. So it's just like, wow. This yeah, is what got, it's like. Well, because you got to realize Ben, so Ben beat him in 2005. They beat him in 06. Uh, he then beat him in 07. He beat Shaq in 2007. He beat him in 2004. So, I mean, beat him like three out of four years. So, um, yeah, no complaints with, uh, no complaints with Ben Wallace. Uh, the dude was, uh, dude was awesome. Couldn't score, but dude was awesome. So I'm up, right? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Zadrunas Hilgaskis. Um, you know, he played, what, 13 years in the league. He made a couple all-star teams. He was like 15 and 8, solid guy. And this is pick what? You're 12. Yeah, this is pick 12. So, I mean, your 12th pick, you're getting a 15 and 8 guy. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, my 13th pick is going to be Kerry Kittles. A lot of people won't know who Kerry Kittles was because his uh, knee love. gave out. Huh? I said I love Kittles. Yeah, you talk about a super cut guy. That's Kerry Kittles. Um, dude was dude was just athletic as all hell. He's about six five. He's probably only like one seventy five. He, um, I mean, he hit a decent three. I mean, he scored like seventeen a game at his peak. He was getting you close to like two steals, about five boards, two three assists. He wasn't like I said. He was a he was a good shooting guard. He wasn't an all star level shooting guard uh, level, but he was a good st- solid, you know, 15 to 17 point guy. And that's why I would go with him at a uh, 13th. What about you? Who you got at 14th and 15th? All right. So for 14th, I am going with Eric Dampier. Okay. Uh, Eric Dampier. He was a, um, he was a pretty decent, you know, he, Decent player. He was a double guy. He was a double guy, double guy. Yeah, you know, um, his career didn't really shape out that way as far as his ending numbers. But yeah, you know, at his peak, he is, you know, a player. It's like twelve and nine. Player. Right. That's what I was gonna say. So you know, he is one of those players that can give. No, you twelve some and solid twelve points. was his peak. What year was that that he did? Was that with the Mavericks or was that with Golden State? One of those years he averaged 12 and 12. I remember I remember the Mavs were all hyped about signing him when they were trying to get over the hump in like that 06 range. I mean, he didn't help him out at all. But yeah, he was like 12 and 12. So I mean that's really solid for like a you know 14th pick. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I was going to get to is, um, you know, these are the players that you want that can come off the bench, that can help you down the stretch in a, in a, in a playoffs and stuff like that. So, yeah, that would be a solid player. Um, so, going with him. Um, I'm also going with Tony Delk. Um, Dude dropped 53 in a game once. Yeah. So, with Tony Delk, um, I like him defensively. Um, I feel as though – you know, he's once again, we're back to the players where we need people that can contribute. Uh, what's this? Hold on, my bad. Dennis Rodman is the best player of all time. No, is Dennis Rodman the best player of all time to never average about 10 points a game? So if you're talking, oh, above 10 points. So Dennis Rodman one year did average 11.6. So that wouldn't be the case. Uh, if I was going to go with that, Ben Wallace never got to 10. So I would say Ben Wallace would be the best player to ever, never average 10. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, I get why you would say Ben Wallace. Me personally, based on like for sake of what we're looking into, I was I would pick I would pick Rodman. I would definitely pick Rodman over. Um, I don't want to say definitely. That was a strong word, but for what I look for in players, yeah, I like Rodman. Um, Rodman's gonna give you just as many rebounds. But the difference is Rodman's going for every rebound. Um, it may have come a little easier for Ben to get his boards. But with Iver, I mean, Iverson, but with Rodman, what you're seeing is somebody who's willing to sacrifice their body on every possession to get the ball back. So I, I kind of honor that. I respect that. So, yeah, I will pick Rodman over Ben. Um, I got you. So I got Dan Pierre and I got Tony Delk. It's, so it's, it's, it's getting, it's getting what? No, well, I'm, I'm saying. Say, um, I'm about to say. I'm about to say. Top 12, 14, go ahead. No, now once that we're we out of, out of that, yeah. Once we got out of that, because this is my number 15, once we got out of this, it's that was becoming difficult because a lot of these players that were on the 96, a lot of these players that was on that draft class um, didn't really make it 10 years in the league. Like I'm saying well, that a lot. Well, luckily for me, I know what I'm going to go ahead and do and what must be done. So mm. I'm going to go I ahead and do up. it. So with my, what is this, the 16th pick? 16th and 17th, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go with Derek Fisher. As you should. Um, dude, I think only averaged over double dig digits twice in his career, and they're both with Utah. I think one year he averaged 11, another year he averaged 13. Uh, but I got a solid role player. I got a guy that's not afraid to hit big shots. I got I got my first – this is the first point guard I've drafted, and uh, he's not much of a point guard. Uh, like I said, he's more of a <laughs> – I mean, he can bring the ball up, yeah, and he could, he could shoot some open shots, and that's really about it. Um, I used to love when he would get going, especially when he was old, and he'd get going to the rim, and he'd throw up that ball <laughs> because he was scared it would get blocked. And it would just go <laughs> like 10 feet over the hoop, uh, like in his thunder years and all that. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go Derek Fisher with the 16th pick. After that, I'm going to have to go with uh, – I'm going to bring him back from the dead. I'm going Lorenz and Wright. <laughs> I mean, you got to go Lorenz and Wright at this point. Um, that was another really solid player. Yeah, uh, that was going to be my next one. Yeah, too bad about, you know, him and his wife and all that, you know, uh, wish better for him. But, yeah, so I got to go Derek Fisher and I got to go Lorenz and Wright. Who you got for us? Oh, man. So at this point, I'm actually going way down on a list. Who I'm going with next is, um, dang. I'm going with Malik Rose. He was on my list. Was he? Yep. He was big in that 97, uh, I mean, that 99 championship. Yeah. Um, once again, I mean, we're, we're at the point where the numbers don't, you know, these players aren't going to give you, you know, great numbers at this point. You feel me? I don't, I don't think anybody else on this list is probably going to give you more than like 10 and seven. Um, over the course of their career, that is, but yeah. I'm no, right now with, it's just about filling out your bench. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going with him, and then I'm going. 
Paula, I guess the other, the only other player that um, comes to mind for me right now is, um, oh yeah, I did. I got Rose. All right, so Leak Rose and um, my bad. Dante Jones keeps standing out to me, even though he only played the one season. So was it the 15 games and the 2.9 points per game? <laughs> like it was a strong 2.9 like, or that's what's I going feel on? Like, I feel like I must have seen him like his he's standing out to me for some was it that, reason. Was it, was it that 33% shooting he was doing in those 15 games? Maybe the 26% yeah. from three? Nah, I couldn't have been a 26, but maybe. I don't know, man. Um you know what's crazy? You want to know a funny thing? So I'm sitting here because, like I said, I have my draft board, my list, okay? So the worst person, the second worst person uh, that played, uh, we'll use we'll use that actually played a career, okay? We'll go with that. That actually played a career, Todd Fuller. He played five seasons. He was negative 5.7 in the box plus minus score, right? Negative mm-hmm. 5.7. Just to give you an example, uh, Lorenzen Wright, who mostly played on bad teams, was negative 2.6. This dude was negative 5.7. Your boy... Dante Jones was a negative 11 in the box minus score. By far the best in the class. Nobody was worse at contributing to the plus minus of a box score than Dante Jones. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you, bro. I say you pick him. I wish you would have picked him instead of Nash. I bet you do. I, I feel like I must have seen him have at least one game. I don't know why he's standing out because, yeah, his numbers are trash. Mm-hmm. Whatever. All right. So I got a bus on my team. The rest is gonna be solid though. That's who you're on with, Dante Jones? I mean, I already picked him. I mean, you could not pick him. I mean, it's not like we're in the NBA war room right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really that sure, big a deal. Him. All us and mm-hmm. our dozens and dozens of watchers. Yeah, this is crazy. I feel like I need some size though. Um, uh, no, no, that's cool. That's cool. I'll, I'll just stay with you. Feel me? I ain't gonna even. I ain't gonna even shake it up no more. Yeah, you gonna shake it up no more. All right. What number was that? That was um. That was eighteen and nineteen. It was eighteen and nineteen. All right. So I gotta go. I gotta show some love. Let's see where are we at right now. Okay. Uh, I'm going Samaki Walker. Knew it. Yep. He wasn't ready for Smocky Walker. And after that, I'm going, oh, man. I'm going Walter McCarty. Walter McCarty, there's there's my three-point shooting. And then with Smocky, I got a little more size. Got a guy that can get me some boards, uh, a little bit of length. Hopefully he can um, deflect some passes, deflect some shots. I'll t- uh, deter people from going Whoa. to the rim. So I'm going Smokey Walker, and I'm going. Um, who else you, said, um, you said Smokey Walter and uh, McCarty. Walker. Oh, Walter, Walter McCarty. Yeah. And uh, as uh, Tommy Hines would always say, Walter. <laughs> so that's who I got. Who you up? You up next? Who you got? Um, dang, you already got O'Neal. Mm-hmm. All of these players, dang, bro. Uh, you got all these people. John, I'm going with John Wallace. Um, he's at Lisa. The <laughs> Orange Man. The Orange Man. He's an orange man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's from Cruz. Or what they say, Scruz. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with um, John Wallace. And is this? Jerome Williams. Um, oh, you going with you going with the you going with the dog. The junk the JYD. Who was ready for the JYD? So wait, so who you got? You got Jerome Williams. Yeah, I said Jerome Williams, and I went with um dang, how can you just have this? It was Jerome Williams and John Wallace. That's what it was. John Wallace. All right. What numbers were those on the picks? 
That was um 20 and 21. Oh no, it wasn't. I'm lying. That wasn't 20 and 21. That was um 22 and 23. Okay, so I got one more left for me to have 12. How many do you got? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven. I'm at 12. You got 12 as well. All right. So this is the last pick then. We're going to go ahead and um, who else am I going to go with? I'm going to go with Vitaly Popintanko. That's that's the next one. I'm going to go ahead and get number 77 out there. Going to be draining threes. Going to be banging shit in. He's going to be killing it. And that's just that. Um, and that is how it is. So now let's go ahead and let's uh, – Let's set this up just for the sake of setting it all up. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play it well. Me and you to the death, battling it out. We are going to we're going to find out whose team is better. I know, bro. My point guards is pretty solid, though. Using Steph and Steve as my point guards, the ST connection, STE connection. Use those two sons. Use the two Allens as my shooters. Let's talk about it. Hold on. Let's talk about it. I need, I do need a point guard. Let's talk about a trade. You think we can make a trade? All right. So well, <laughs> you can't get Nash. <laughs> no, then never mind. That's all I want. So trade's <laughs> off. Trade, <laughs> trade, trade is off. <laughs> Fuck all that. Fair Fuck enough. That. Fair Fuck enough. Fuck all right. So let's do this. So, um, let me think of how you want to um, – let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to simulate these games, and we are going to see what's up if I can ever pull it up. Let me see here. Where are we at? Uh, as soon as I get this up, we'll get going. All right, so let's go like here. Then let's go with um, – what's going to be your uh, – all right, so – What's gonna be your rotation, bro? Who are you starting at point? I'm starting. Um, I'm starting Nash at point. Start Nash at point. All right, hold up. And then who are you starting at the two guard? Iverson. Starting Iverson at the two guard. And then who's your three? I'm gonna make Ray. I'm gonna make Ray Allen my three. Ray Allen is your three. Who's your four? Antoine Walker. Who's your five? Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace. All right. Um, you got anybody you want to play behind them? Anybody else in the rotation or? Yeah, I mean Marbury's going to be in a rotation to help um to help Nash as far as is he playing guard. two guard too? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna help with that too. So even though he's coming off the bench, Marbury is gonna get a lot of time. Like you know, okay. I mean, he's not gonna be one of those bench players that's getting like twenty minutes. He's still gonna be getting like thirty. He just ain't starting. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put Marbury down for thirty minutes, and then you got you still got you still got what's up? No, nah, I was saying um, Dan Pierce gonna get some PT, obviously. Um, how much playing time is Marbury? I mean, how much playing time is Nash getting? Thirty-three minutes. As as many as many as he can play. Yeah, at least you feel me. He's gonna get the starter minimum. Okay. I'm working. How many? Okay, I, we got Iverson at thirty-three minutes as well. I don't know. Iverson is Iverson. Iverson is accustomed to playing forty minutes a game. Uh, I might have to boost Iverson up to like thirty-eight. Okay, he so, don't like coming out of games. Okay, so let's go. So let's go like, how are we going to do this? 33, and then we'll give him, we'll give him, you said 40 minutes you want to play him? Mm. Or, 30, or 38. What you, how many minutes you want to play him? 38. Okay. And then uh, what you want to give Ray Allen? Ray Allen, he can, um, Ray Allen gets 30 minutes as well. 30 minutes as well. All right. So there's Ray Allen. So, um, so who you got? Who you got backing up on the three? I mean, we already got we got Iverson, Nash, and Marbury. 
with your one, two, th- with your ones and twos, your backcourt. You got Ray Allen coming off that. We got Iverson a little bit at the small forward, five minutes a game. Who you got now? Now I need 13 minutes at small forward. Who you got for me? Oh, let me see. Can't use them here. Let me check something real quick with um. I'm thinking possibly Rose, but I want to double check. Yeah, um, he's a power though. Um, yeah, but he was a small power. He could play a couple minutes there, there. Okay, so yeah, I guess Rose. Yeah, yeah especially with him being the type that plays the power position. You know, um, that's gonna bring a certain level of toughness to the two. I'm not really looking for him to to score. I, I need him out there as um somebody that's gonna play defense and give um Ray Allen a rest. So yeah. All right, we got Antoine at the power. Who you got? Who you got backing him up? No one. He's in there by himself. Nah. <laughs> um, Antoine yeah, Williams, Malik Rose. I was gonna go with. Um, I'm thinking John Wallace. Going with John Wallace. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna have John Wallace back up um Antoine Walker. How many minutes are Antoine playing? Antoine is mm, I'm gonna put Antoine in like 28 minutes. Okay. And then um all right. And then uh what about center? You got Ben Wallace doing 48 minutes or what do we got? Ben Wallace and um I'm going to have um, Dampier help him. Okay. How many minutes are you playing Dampier? How many are you playing Ben Wallace? Ben Wallace is going to be in the majority of the game. I'm, I'm going to need Ben Wallace for 35 minutes. Um, Dampier, he might 13? get... 13? Yeah. That's all that's left is 13. All right. We're going to set your squad up. Boom. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the winning squad up real quick. <laughs> go ahead. Already got the winning squad up. No, 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 no. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go balls to the wall. Fuck this. Going for the win. I'm going balls to the wall. I'm going for the win. So I got Kobe at the one. I got Peja at the two. I got Sharif at the three. And I got Jermaine at the four. And then I got Camby at the five. And I'm just playing them all 48 minutes. Fuck it. Going for the win. We're going, for, um, going for the win. We're going for the win. So let, me set, so let me set this up real quick, and then we will pull up the box score, and we will call it a night, and let's figure out who drafted. Don't be my team, yeah. bro. Trust me. Nah, it ain't. It's a cool, though. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, Even with the bus I got. And I'm going I'm going with, nah, man, you two, you two perimeter heavy. See, that's your problem. See, I went, I went rebound <laughs> blocks. I went rebound <laughs> blocks with, with some Kobe scoring. I got some threes with Stoyakovich. I mean, I got I got three dudes that got me ten game. Plus my two my, my point guard six six and my two guard is six. What was Stoyakovich? Six eleven, six nine. He, yeah, like I think that. he's like six nine. Six ten. We'll just split it. We'll say six ten for the sake of argument. So there we go. We got him. All right. Let's see what's up. And well. Bro, I beat you one thirteen to ninety nine. If we could see this box score, one thirteen to ninety nine. One thirteen ninety nine. So what? What? What happened was, is um, is let's see, where did I dominate at? Kobe gave me twenty seven, shot ten for twenty one, eight point six assists. I got forty three boards to your forty two. Jermaine had twenty four and twelve for me. Camby had twelve, fourteen, and four. Uh, Sharif had 16 and four. He fouled him out pretty quick. I had to go with Malt or McCarty. That's the only reason why y'all kept it close because I only got 30 minutes out of him. Uh, Antoine was probably your best dude. He gave you 20 and 26 minutes, nine for 16. Stefan Marbury came off the bench for seven and tw- 28 minutes. Um, yeah, player of the seven. game was Kobe. Yeah, Kobe was player of the game 27, six, eight, five steals, one blocked. So we have it. Once again, I have built the team for success. 
It is the it is the outstanding domination. We are the hoop historians. We are dropping <laughs> dimes like Tare, and that was the re ninety six draft. If you think we fucked up anywhere, please let us know. Um, other than that, though, that is the end of our hour. We will check y'all till tomorrow. I'm Tony Styles. He is the best rapper you never heard of at Unique. Please check us tomorrow. Please like, subscribe. Until then, we 